So if you think of LDL as, as, a, as a little taxi particle, if you think of an LDL molecule as being about the size of a human being, endothelial cells which line all your blood vessels throughout your whole body and act a bit like tiles lining a, a wall or, or, or a tube station or something. Of course, they're much more complicated than that. And then, and then to feel yourselves about the size of a Wembley football stadium or a large football stadium, just to give you some idea of the, the sort of size, anyway. So the current idea is obviously that if you have more LDL in your bloodstream, it will leak through the endothelium, which is this single layer with a, bit, a few other bits and pieces, and into the arterial wall behind where it then gradually builds up and gradually builds up and builds up these thickenings. Well, of course, the first thing is, though, is well, why is it, why does it only happen in certain places? And why does it not happen in veins or in the blood supply circulation in your, in your lungs? Why only in arteries does this happen? And why only in bits of your arteries? If it's all leaking through everywhere, it should just thicken up as a kind of gradual thickening process. That requires that this little, little LEL particle can get, comes up to the endothelium and then passes straight through it and then travels about half a mile, it would be, if you were a human being, to the other side of the cell, wall, cell, where it goes up to the other side of the membrane and then pops out again and then ends up in the in the artery wall behind. So you go think, well, that is a process that, that is required to happen, but that process, we know it can't happen because endothelial, the cell membranes are, are barriers. They're perfect barriers. Yes, they allow certain things, and we know from recent events that COVID-19 viruses can, can stick to a receptor on the cell membrane lock into that and then be drawn into the cell. We also know that LDL particles uh, or molecules or whatever you want to call them, as you know, a cell wants LDL inside it, it creates an LDL receptor. The LDL comes along, it locks onto it and it draws it into the cell. Well, that tells us two things. First of all, LDL can't get into a cell unless there's an LDL receptor there. So the cell must want it in. So this idea that if there's more or higher concentration in the bloodstream, well, the cell doesn't care what the concentration is in the bloodstream. It can keep everything out. Cells can, cells can prevent the, the, the passage of single atoms or ions. There are channels in your cell membrane that allow the passage of ions in and out. And, and, and an LDL molecule would be, if, if an LDL, in moving sizes again, if a single atom was the size of a, a man in a rowing boat, you know, an LDL molecule would be the size of a super tank. So this, the cell can keep single atoms out. And yet the idea is if the concentration is higher in the blood, it will just go straight through the cell membrane, rush through the cell and pop out the other side. Now, that requires processes that do not exist in nature. First of all, it would require an inside out LDL receptor on the other side of the, of the cell membrane. No one's ever suggested such a thing can possibly exist or what its function would be but then grabs hold of the LDL and pops it out the other side. This mechanism does not exist, all right? So the mechanism of transportation to an endothelial cell does not exist. We also partly have to prove that your brain has to make its own cholesterol. And the reason why it has to make its own cholesterol is because the LDL cannot get in past what's called the blood-brain barrier, all right? So there are cells in your brain called glial cells that support neurons. One of their functions is to produce, to synthesize cholesterol, and it transports it about in a different form of lipoprotein. Don't worry, it gets all complicated. So we know that LDL can't get through the, an endothelial cell. So then the other argument is, oh, well, it gets between the, the endothelial cells. And you go, well, have you ever looked at how endothelial cells link together in, you know, in blood vessels? Well, they're linked together, they're enormously complicated. This thing called tight junctions, translocation junctions, and, and it's a bit like they've got zips and, and buttons, and, and they link together protein, strong protein links, all the way across, that link together, because they can't allow anything to go between them either. Because if you allow anything to slip between endothelial cells, it will, it will slip between endothelial cells, it will get into what they call the interstitial fluid, fluid between cells, and it will kill you. 